All eyes are on Alabama today as voters in the southern state choose their next U.S. senator in a special election. It was originally expected to be a little-noticed race with no real competition. But as John Yang reports, due to state politics and sexual misconduct claims, the contest between Republican Roy Moore and Democrat Doug Jones has come down to the wire. Embattled Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore saddled up today, going on horseback to vote at the fire station in Gallant, Alabama. Asked if he had a message for the multiple women who've accused him of sexual misconduct when they were teenagers, Moore replied, tell the truth. He also had a message for Alabamians. Well, I think they ought to go out and vote their conscience, and we have a tremendous turnout the state. The nation is watching this. If Moore wins, Republican senators have promised he'll face an ethics investigation. We'll take those problems up when we get to the Senate, when we win. His opponent, Democrat Doug Jones, cast his ballot in a Birmingham suburb. This is an important time in Alabama's history, and we feel very confident of where we are and, and, and how this is going to turn out. But more importantly, we feel so good about what we've done and what we've said to the people of Alabama and to the people of the United States. Jones hoped to win the votes of Republicans who've drawn the line at the accusations against Moore. I am being loyal at its most courageous by saying I hold my party to higher standards than Roy Moore. Some Moore supporters say they doubt his accusers. These are allegations and in America I believe it still holds true that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Moore's campaign remained controversial to the very end, his closing rally in Midland City. Former White House advisor Steve Bannon railed against Republicans who've distanced themselves from Moore. There's a special place in hell <laughs> for Republicans who should know better. That seemed aimed at Ivanka Trump, who had said there was a special place in hell for people who prey on children. Moore's wife tried to put down accusations of anti-Semitism. Fake news would tell you that we don't care for Jews. And I tell you all this because I've seen it all, so I just want to set the record straight while they're here. <laughs> One of our attorneys is a Jew. The candidate himself made a final pitch. If you don't believe in my character, don't vote for me. At his own closing rally last night, Democrat Jones called on voters to choose the right path. And I think we're going to see it tomorrow, that the majority of the people of Alabama say that it is time that we put our decency, our state, before political party. In recent days, some Alabamians answered their phones to hear the voice of President Trump. Roy Moore is the guy we need to pass our Make America Great Again agenda. Others heard a robocall from President Barack Obama backing Jones. His message? This one's serious. You can't sit it out. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang. And now to two people who've been on the ground today talking to Alabamians about this contest. Don Daly is news director at Alabama Public Television. He's covered the state for three decades. And the NewsHour's own Daniel Bush, who's been reporting in Birmingham and some smaller cities that are farther to the north. It's good to see both of you. Uh, Dan, Don Daly, I'm going to start with you. You have been talking to uh, voters today, did different polling places. What are you seeing? I'm seeing a lot of enthusiasm. I think what was most noticeable to me today at the polling places that I visited was the turnout was uh, noticeably larger than it has been in both the primary and the runoff elections. Both of those saw uh, turnout below 20 percent. Uh, we've seen a lot of action at polls today. We've actually seen lines, and that's something we didn't see in the Republican runoff uh, election, nor in the primaries. The Secretary of State here is still sticking with his projection that we'll see up to 25 percent. That would obviously be a significant improvement, but still rather low considering all that's perceived to be uh, at stake in this election. And, and Dan Bush, you were out, uh, as we said, also talking to voters around the state, specifically looking for Republicans who had supported President Trump. What were you hearing from them? That's right, Judy. So I spoke to a mix of Republicans farther north, outside of Birmingham, areas where Donald Trump 
won in 2016 by upwards of 75 or more percent. And now, some had mixed feelings about the allegations against Roy Moore. Some said they believed them. Some said they weren't sure. But most of the people I spoke with said that, ultimately, they can't bring themselves to vote for a Democrat. They said that, for them, their priorities are social issues, abortion, same-sex marriage, and other issues. And, ultimately, that far outweighed the uh, allegations against Roy Moore. Don Daly, how does that square with what you've been hearing from voters, especially today as they were having to make a decision? I, I spoke with uh, a pretty much a cross-section of voters today, and they were pretty entrenched. Uh, on one side, the Roy Moore supporters uh, deeply uh, behind him on some of the very issues that Dan mentioned there. Doug Jones uh, supporters, by and large, saying they're embarrassed by the allegations against Roy Moore and they'd like to send someone to Washington who uh, they feel like wouldn't embarrass them, which has also been something that uh, Doug Jones has been playing up a lot in his campaign ads here in Alabama. In the run-up to the election, he has said emphatically, I won't embarrass you, Alabama. And, and Don, are you sensing that people have made up their minds mostly uh, in the late in the last few days. Have they had their minds made up earlier? What did you see there? Some people we talked to as late as yesterday were telling us that they were still on the fence on this issue. There were enough Republicans who were rattled by the allegations who told us uh, yesterday that uh, they were going to have to uh, make a last-minute decision when they went into the voting booth. But there were just as many uh, who said they had their minds made up. There were some who have told us that they had their minds made up about Roy Moore even before these sexual misconduct allegations arose, given the past controversies that have followed him. Dan, I think both of you, uh, I mean, well, part of the story of the last few weeks has been the reaction of women voters uh, in Alabama, women, Republican women in particular. What did you, uh, what did, what did you take away from talking to them? You know, it's interesting, Judy, because there wasn't a very big difference between women Republicans and men. Uh, the women that I spoke to uh, basically all said that although, you know, they didn't, they didn't uh, condone Roy Moore's behavior, whether they believed it or not, you know, they still ultimately felt that they had to vote for a Republican. And it's notable, you know, this election is really showing how deep partisanship uh, runs and in and, and a race with a pretty stark choice. Uh, female voters, you know, who said that they, uh, they would be upset if those allegations were true still end up voting for Roy Moore on the issues alone. All right. Well, we are going to be talking to both of you as the night goes on. And tomorrow, Dan Bush with the NewsHour, Don Daly with Alabama Public Television. Thank you both. Thank you, Judy.